Thanks for your support as a channel member, Sandeep Das. You know how sometimes you get so far ahead at the top of the table that you forget that you could just win the league really early and then you win the league and you forgot to record it? That. Uh, but even though the league is already won, I mean, it's February and the league is already won and we do still have the FA Trophy, which is starting to get interesting. So let's go back to one of my old stomping grounds in the FA Trophy. Hello and welcome to part 22 of the Bourne Legacy. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have an FA Trophy game away against Boston and then hopefully another FA Trophy game because, as previously mentioned, the league, as you would expect after that kind of form, is done. And it's done super early. It is the 26th of February. Um, we actually we didn't win it in our last game. Um, we won it between matches two games ago, I think. So I think we played Thatcham won that and then before the Chertsey game because of results elsewhere we won the league I was planning on coming back and showing you the Chertsey game so you could see us win the league I was going to show you Chertsey championship celebration and then the FA Trophy game but I thought you know what we've already won the league now there's no point watching the Chertsey match let's do Boston gamble on winning it and hope that we can then do two FA Trophy games in this episode the FA Trophy still has a long way to go um, there are Another four rounds after this one. So although the season feels like it's nearly over, if we're serious about trying to win this, and I think we should be, based on the teams that are left in it, there's a lot of teams in there that I know we can beat. In fact, I don't think there's anyone in there that we can't beat. So it's, it is a winnable trophy. Let's go Let's go try and win it. Um, there have been transfers since the last episode, though. Um, the, the, the players leaving has started to happen. We knew this time would come. We knew about Ben Barkley from the last episode. Luke Plange, though, is now a championship footballer. He's gone to Brentford. He's earning £1,700 a week. Um, he's even played a championship game for them. Um, but, I mean, that was an incredible performance. 32 goals from 39 games in all competitions. He deserves his move. And thankfully, we'd pretty much wrapped up the league title before he went. So as long as we can find another one of them next year, we're all good. Tyrese Dice has gone to Bristol Rovers. He's going to be earning £625 a week and is playing in League Two. Again, another example of the calibre of players that we've got. Marlon Fossey, South End, £750 a week. Again, straight into their team in League Two. Um, and Gail Kaleba um, is gone to Warrington, £300 a week for him. Um, it, he's at roughly our level, but again, he's starting games there, whereas he wasn't with us. As a response to that, we've brought in a couple of players just to fill squad gaps. I don't think we'd brought in Harry Lennon in the last episode. Um, he is a non to legend veteran. Um, I think I've had him, I'm sure I had him at Bristol Rovers maybe last year. Let me know if that sounds right. But he's come in to fill the gap that was left by Barkley. Um, Lee Hodson, who... I don't know if I've managed him on YouTube, but I certainly remember I did a Watford save, which obviously was pre-YouTube, um, but I remember having him in my Watford team years ago and he was brilliant. His career didn't quite work out the way it did in my Watford save, but still a very good calibre of player. Um, most recently in England, been playing in League One last season, um, left there to go on loan to the Scottish Championship and he's now playing for us and obviously straight in our team and looks like a very good player at this level and lastly Josh McGuinness is our or Mag how do you say his name he's our replacement for Plange not a bad replacement to have really straight we've sent a player to the championship and brought one out of the championship to replace him he's obviously not a prolific goal scorer at the level he's been playing at but then he's not played at this level before and he's scoring goals at a decent rate here two goals from his first three substitute appearances so we're not missing Plange too much just yet so this is the team that is going to be out there to face uh, Boston today and we've got Daniels in goal back for Rowe, Lennon, Wiggett and Hodson by the way Wiggett has done a bit of a Mick Powell um, if we have a look at him as a defender he's comfortably the best centre-back at the club now um, this is the boy who the first exposure to us was missing a penalty in the FA Cup well since then he's played pretty much every game 
and he's looking like he's going to be the next one to go on to bigger and better things. Smith still here in midfield alongside Lidl. Garcia and Lee as the wingers. McGuinness with his first start for us alongside Hector Ingram up front, who also is still here, but obviously attracting attention from football league clubs. He's now got 36 goals from 38 games in all competitions. Let's get into the Boston game. Um, obviously, Boston was where it all began for me on YouTube, if you don't count that two or three seasons I did with Posh when I really didn't know what I was doing. But my first non-league to legend, my first starting club was Boston. So it's quite fun to head back to Boston and see how we get on. Um, that's sure. I was going to say for a second, there, I thought they had Tammy Abraham up front and I was just going to give up. It's Timmy Abraham, though. Probably not the same, but I'm not an expert. He could be. Um, Rowe with the cross from the free kick. Lennon is there and heads just wide. Um, I think this is the first time in Bourne's history playing in the FA Trophy. Not this match, because we played like three matches to get to this point. Um, but I think this season is the first time Bourne have ever been at a level to compete in this competition. Someone will no doubt correct me if I'm wrong, but I think... FA Trophy is for Tier 8 and above teams because it was it was the FA Vars we were playing in last year and we never got to win it and I was very sad. So the FA Trophy, I think we continue to compete in until we hit the National League North and South. So it would be nice to win it on the way through these leagues. Um, or does, does the FA Trophy go all the way? To, does it include the National Oh, it must include the National League, but play in Boston. So this we're in this all the way to the Football League now. And I know we did win it with home. I think we were in Tier 6 or 7 when we won it with home last year. So precedent has been set. If we can win it from way below levels with home, can we do it with Bourne from an even lower level to just confirm that this Bourne side... I mean, it's clear this Bourne side is much better than the home side we had at this stage last year. Although, to counter that, I guess... When we were in Tier 8 with home, we had a player who went on to play 50 times for England. So may, maybe maybe it's roughly equivalent. Obviously, Dean Morris, much better than Martin Smith. So our best players for home were, were better than our best players here at Bourne. But I think we've got better quality throughout the squad. It's a more, much more regular thing for our players to go off and play in the Football League now than it was last year with home. Um, row with the corner it's an in-swinger that doesn't find its way to a born shirt but Smith has picked it up and got a cross away when he really had no right to do so the ball pings around in the area no one can really apply a finish to it and now Boston have got the chance for a counter-attack and it is with Timmy not Tammy Abraham charging forward and he's got himself into a position in the middle to try and get on the end of the cross but the cross never comes and it is a corner for Boston the other thing of course is that Boston are another one of our Lincolnshire rivals it's just down the road from Bourne. Um, so it's one of those teams that if we were to play with them for long enough it could develop into a local rivalry but I'd like to think we won't play them too many times in our history because we'll just fly past them that being said they're trying to spoil my fun today because they've gone 1-0 up against us and I can't help but think how different things might have been if we'd have still had the likes of Plange and Barkley and some of our other players who've moved on throughout the season. The FA Trophy seems to get started a little bit late in the year for me. The league's pretty much wrapped up. We're winding down for the year. We're expecting to be off on our holidays in six weeks, and all of a sudden there's this competition that doesn't end until the middle of May. No one really wants to win it anyway, because we don't want to still be playing in the middle of May. Um, Ingram, Hector Ingram hasn't done very well today at all. We're going to take off. What does Magenis want to be? He wants to be a t I mean, let's try doing a target man. We'll do target man pressing forward. Can you be in a, one of them needs to be attacking? He's going to have to be an advance forward. Um, and Lee can come off for Corbett. And we're going to go positive and we're going to try and win a football match. Uh, but I guess, I mean, I'm always. Timmy, not Tammy's there again. I am always against using a, a target man because I hate him. I hate him. But it, with a wing play system, which we are using, I guess there's worse instructions you can give because at least then it, you are actually trying to... A target man is useful in this system, so I guess there is an argument for using one. So he can be one, but I think I think we've probably come up against a team today who are a little bit better than we are. And, uh, yeah, much much sadness ensues. We got knocked out of the Alan Turvey Cup as well. 
Um, so that's one we'll never get the opportunity to win again because I think that was just for teams at this level. So we've uh, we're only, we've only got the one trophy this year if we can't pick up the FA trophy, which obviously puts our, our total down to four trophies in three seasons, which is completely unacceptable. Although obviously, we are going to be playing at Tier 7 next year, which I think I think means a promotion next year and then we're in the Conference North slash South, which means, and I think that's the point where we can start off, off, offering proper contracts. So we've potentially only got one more year of having the plunge situation, which is how we'll describe it, where we've got players who, I mean, we could have got, if we'd assigned him in the conference, I believe we could have got half a million pounds for him if he's going to Brentford at that level. Um, but obviously at this level we get nothing for it we lose a player and we don't get any money to compensate us for it either we did try and offer him a contract to get him to stay and he wanted two and a half thousand pounds a match which we couldn't offer him believe it or not um, we've got knocked out of this this wasn't in the script for today's episode because now I don't know what to do with the <laughs> second half of it um, yeah I mean oh dear they didn't like that they expected to, they expected to win too wowzers right we will i'll show you one more game in the league because i know i know some of you oh you wouldn't be able to handle one match in an episode that would be far too troublesome so plus it does kind of signpost the fact we got knocked out so we'll play this next league game it will be the last league game i show this season and we'll just go straight into the uh the transfer special tomorrow from there because there's no point showing you a bunch more matches when we've already won the league we're, i think we're something like 25 points clear we are 25 points clear at the top of the league so i'll show you how it finishes at the in the next episode but for now we'll just have one more game um so you can see these these boys together one more time because i imagine the majority of them will be gone by the next episode which is very sad so we've shuffled things around just a little bit for the Belfont, the Bedfont, sorry, sports game, um, because we can. Um, Hodgson goes over to left back, Wigget goes out to right back, Bellowain comes in to play at centre back with Rowe dropping down onto the bench. We're also going with McKendie and Ingram up front, Garcia and Lee wide. Um, so McGuinness drops down to the bench. We're dropping the old men. Let's let's go with the ones who, if they stick around, are what we're going to build a basis of the future of this football club around. If we can just keep can I make a deal with the football manager universe? If you let me keep one of Hector Ingram or Smith until we get to the National League North or South, I will... I don't know. What can I offer them in return? <laughs> I, I have nothing to offer. Somebody offer something. We need to make a deal with the football manager gods. Let me know down in the comments what deal we can make. We need a deal. I need to keep at least one of these players. Or even one of the ones who's not quite at that level. Just let me... I would love to have a player who's in the team now still be in the team this time next year. We haven't managed to achieve that yet in this save. And I'm very excited when the day comes when we have a player who's here for two or three years in a row. Because that would just be awesome. Lee, he's in. He could be the man. 22nd goal of the season for him from the right wing. That's an absurd amount of goals for a right winger to score. And I think we are... We're having another one of our games today, boys and girls, where we're going to score lots of goals. Lee started things out from in the middle of the pitch there. Little with the shot. It ends up back with Lee, who's now made his way all the way into the penalty area on the right-hand side of it. It's just a tidy finish. He's just a good player. We've got a very good, albeit very small squad. We are pretty much at the 18-man minimum that we need to be now with all the players that have left. Um, and if anyone else does leave, we are going to have to draft more in just to have bodies in the team to get us through the end of this season. We are kind of at the point now where there's no one else out there I've got my eye on to come in as an immediate replacement, which I kind of did with Lennon. I knew I had an idea he was going to be coming in if we lost a centre-back. Um, but I don't really have anyone in mind now. I think we are reaching that point of the season where we're just going to have to bring in whatever there is just to fill the bench. Because it doesn't really matter anyway. We've already won the league. We could lose every game for the rest of the season and we're still well ahead at the top of the table. The, the problem is it then causes problems with momentum and morale for next season. Maybe. I mean, it would in normal circumstances. I don't even know if it does in these circumstances because obviously most of these players won't be here. So they don't give uh, monkeys, a monkey's uncle about the, uh, 
the morale and momentum that happened last year before they were here. Wiggett now plays it into Lee, who's in behind once again. He's got players queuing up in the middle. Garcia is one of them, and he grabs his 18th goal of the season, which is, again, not too shabby for a return for a player who's been playing out of position all year on that left wing. Was injured for, what, two months for the first half of the season? has fought his way back into the team and continued to score lots of goals, which is absolutely splendid, if you ask me. He's been clattered there, though, which I don't like him being fouled like that. We all know he's made of glass. You can't kick him that hard. And they have had a player sent off for it, which is fair enough, because silly gooses, don't don't hit him that hard. You can see how bad things are getting squad size-wise when Neil Dams has made it back onto the bench. He's been nowhere to be seen for months but now all of a sudden he's back on the bench again. Um, don't get complacent, gentlemen. Exactly. Don't get complacent. We're just going We're literally just keeping an eye on fitness levels and trying to cruise through to the end of the match. Um, I, I assume we now get promoted up into because this is the Isthmian South Central Division. I assume there is an Isthmian Premier League, which we now move into, which I think is then one of the three feeder leagues to the north and south i think i think the isthmian league is the one that feeds both i think the northern premier league feeds into the nor- the conference north i think there's a southern league is it called the southern league i think the southern league feeds into the conference south and then the isthmian league goes wherever it needs to go depending on who gets relegated i think so theoretically we could still end up in either i suspect based on the fact that we were put into the isthmian league rather than the northern premier league i suspect we're going to end up in the conference south which will be a new experience for me new teams to play i'm used to being in the conference north and Bourne is further north than where i live um, it's further north than peter it's further north than home uh, but I think we're going to end up in the Conference South because we are a little bit in the middle. Um, right, we're going to take off McKendy, bring on McGuinness, and we're going to play him as the target man. As discussed previously, Smith is just had enough. He's ready to leave, isn't he? And Tommy Rowe can come on for Hodgson. Um, we'll just do the triple change. We're going to drop a little bit of praise just to work, work them up a little bit, rile them up a little, just so that we don't let Bedfont Sports back into the game. I don't even know where they are in the league. Bedfont Sports are down in 10th place, so... Yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't be letting them back into this match. We've not actually dominated it the way we've been dominating some matches. Um, we've it's fifty fifty for possession, fifty fifty for clear cut chances. Yes, we've had more shots, but we're not actually creating good chances. It's just the fact we've got a very very good bunch of players. I mean, a striker like Hector Ingram who just scores whenever he's anywhere near the ball, um, and Garcia and Lee obviously very good finishers as well. But this is this is just a silly finish from Hector Ingram. You shouldn't be scoring from this angle at any level, never mind at tier eight, because it shouldn't be it shouldn't be possible to squeeze a football into a goal in the space that he had available to him. We've got a penalty here and a chance for yet another hat-trick for Jamal Hector Ingram. He te- steps up to take the penalty and he scores and it's Bedfont Sports 1, born 5 and a 39th goal of the season now for Hector Ingram, who, I mean... He's setting records that are never going to be broken here. I am Of that, I am sure. One thing that do, is a little bit confusing, he's not even in the top three for top scorers in this division. Presumably because so many of his goals have come in the various cup competitions. Um, but, we'll, I mean, he might be after that hat-trick. We'll, just have, we'll have a little look before we end out the episode. But last time I checked, he wasn't. Oh, there you go. He's just made it into the top three now. So, fingers crossed, He if if he's here for the rest of the season, he can push on and finish top scorer. Because I don't think we've had a top scorer yet, because usually they leave. Um, but it would be nice for Hector Ingram to do that. But I, I'm pretty confident the next time you see me, he won't be a born player anymore. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him desperately. An improved deal for Smith. This is interesting. Start negotiations. So this is a player who our coaches reckon is championship quality. We can actually afford to give him what he wants. Have it. Have it. The issue, I guess, is that signing a contract in March means that the six month the six month rule will expire at the start of next season. So it's, we're not actually going to get much in the way of benefit from doing that, other than the fact he's not going to leave now, I guess. 
which I suppose if next year happens to be the year that we can start offering part-time contracts, that might be a masterstroke. That might have been the FM gods answering my prayer. Who knows? Uh, but as mentioned, tomorrow will be the transfer special uh, where hopefully we'll have at least some of these players still here and prepare for life in tier seven, which will commence the day after. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.